Taylor with KSUSA. We're going to talk about how to service your Supernatural Generation 2 seat post today. So before we start our service, I want to talk a little bit about some of the tools you're going to need. One of the things you're going to need is a um, soft jaw for your vise, um, either a V-block or a regular round soft jaw um, is what you need to hold this. If you can't come across those, uh, the other thing you can do is you can mount this uh, or clamp this rather in your bike stand. If you're going to do that, I would recommend using uh, an old inner tube, cut a scrap of that, wrap around the mast and then clamp it into the bike stand. That'll hold it in place. In our case, we're going to go ahead and use the soft jaws. So our first step is going to be to remove the 11 millimeter nut here. To do that, uh, I've got an impact driver here. If you don't have an impact driver, you can also just use a ratchet um, with an 11 millimeter uh, socket. What you want to do is you're going to want to tighten this clockwise slightly and then counterclockwise. What that's going to do is that's going to allow the nut, which is alloy, to release from the lock washer. The lock washer here is going to grip into the nut. And if you try to turn that counterclockwise without first clock turning it clockwise, sometimes it'll grab a hold of the end cap and not allow you to take that out. So we'll take that out. Our next step is going to be to loosen the seal collar. And with the seal collar, uh, basically, if you can loosen it by hand, go ahead and do so. If not, you're going to want to use a strap wrench. So, essentially, these are designed to assemble uh, plumbing pipe and uh, it has a rubber strap here so it's not going to damage anything. These work really well to, to help disassemble the post. So we'll go ahead and tighten that down and then counterclockwise to loosen it. And before we complete the disassembly here, uh, it's a good idea to take a microfiber towel and go ahead and just wipe the outside of this down so that any debris or anything that's on the outside now doesn't end up getting inside and making more work for you to clean when you go to finish the service. So once you get that done, go ahead and unthread the collar counterclockwise. Next step is to go ahead and pull the assembly out your DU bushing here is generally pretty snug in there. If you can pull it and it loosens up like this, go ahead and pull it out that way. If you pull a couple times and it's not moving, or you see that the inner uh, Teflon uh, and steel bushing is starting to come out, instead of taking the carrier out, stop and don't go any further. Use a dead blow mallet and a flathead screwdriver. Put the flathead screwdriver on a little bit of an angle and catch the edge of the bushing. Give it a couple taps and that'll pop the bushing out. What you have inside here is three guide bushings. And if you pull those and do damage to the bottom of your DU bushing, then you're going to have to replace that. And it may be okay and not need replacing. And so you want to follow this step so that you don't damage it. Okay, and then go ahead and put your hand underneath as you kind of wiggle and pull this out because those three guide bushings could possibly fall off of there and you don't want to lose those. Now the easiest way to get these guide bushings out is just with a utility knife. You catch the edge of them with the utility knife and pull that out. Okay. Now you notice at the end of our cartridge shaft here, there's no bottom out bumper that came out with it. So that means the bottom out bumper is still inside the mast and we'll talk about that later. If you happen to pull your assembly out and there's a black bottom out bumper still in the mast, you want to go ahead and pull that off now and set it aside. Because ours is inside, we'll, we'll take care of that step next. Okay. Next step is to check our DU bushing. You want the DU bushing to move smoothly, but there shouldn't be any play. If there's play or if it's really stiff, it's a good time to go ahead and replace that DU bushing. Uh, you can get those through your local bike shop. If you're a bike shop, you can get those through your local distributor. Uh, ours happens to be in good shape, so we're going to pull it off and set it aside. Next step is to pull the seal carrier off. When I got this in my hand, I'm going to go ahead and wipe it all down. I'm going to check the stanchion to make sure there's no scratches or damages. If it's scratched or damaged, you may want to go ahead and get a new cartridge for this. Uh, if everything looks okay and smooth, then we can go ahead and just set this aside. Next step is to, to uh, clean our seal carrier. We use a microfiber towel. There's a lot of grit and dirt. You can use something like Simple Green, just a biodegradable degreaser. I'm gonna go ahead and clean that really good. Make sure we clean the threads on the back side. Now we wanna inspect the seal. 
and the seal should have a good kind of a sharp edge to the rubber all the way around. If it looks worn or it's cracked or checked, these seals are replaceable. You want to get that through your local bike shop or through your local distributor and to remove them, you can just grab that with your fingernail and you can see it pops out. Pull it out, a new one will pop in, really easy to replace. Ours is in excellent shape so we're going to go ahead and reuse it. What we're going to use is uh, some KS Post Paste. Uh, you can get that through your local bike shops, anywhere where you buy KS products. Uh, if you can't find it, you can use uh, Slick Honey, which also is available at most bike shops. Try to avoid using Teflon based greases, uh, lithium greases. Um, they gum up really bad. They don't, they don't uh, offer much uh, water resistance if any water gets into the system and generally just don't work it with suspension. Um, this system, or this grease rather, was designed to work with uh, suspension and, and sliding bushing system. So it's, it's a really good grease. So go ahead and fill the little cavity or void that's between the two wiper seals. Two reasons we do that is we want to make sure that it properly pre-loops the stanchion before it goes through the bushing. The other thing is that it's going to create a water seal so you don't get water coming through. The grease will actually prevent the water from getting inside the post. So that's on. Our next step is to take our DU bushing, which we checked earlier to make sure it was smooth on the stanchion and that everything functioned well. But what you're also going to want to do is take a look inside. Um, make sure there's no scratches or galling there. Uh, ours is in really good shape. It looks smooth. So we're going to go ahead and install that back onto the stanchion. Lastly, we're going to put a little dab of grease in each of these grooves and the lower guide bushing fits in. You're going to kind of push it in and then put a little bit of lube over the top of it. What that does is that's going to create kind of a suction between the grease and that part and it's going to help hold it. It's like having an extra set of hands here. So that'll keep those from falling out when we go to re reinstall them. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and set this sub-assembly aside for now. And now we're going to focus on the mast here. So what we talked about before is that inside, you can see down in there, there's a, a black rubber bottom out bumper inside there. And so, there we go. So that's what it is. And what it's important to get this out of there and not try to put the thing back together with that in there because if this doesn't get lined up and on the shaft, it can wad up inside and be damaged and then it's not going to do its job. So we'll go ahead right now. It's in good shape. There's no cracks or damage to it. We're going to go ahead and put that on this shaft. Okay, now with a little bit of degreaser, microfiber towel, we're going to first clean the roller bearing. And we're going to do that by going back and forth and just rotating the mast as we go. And you can see the stuff's coming off. And what we want to do is, you can see it's coming off there. There's a white uh, bearing race inside there. And you want that to be clean and, and be white color, not, not gray with the, the dirt. And then also you can kind of see the rollers in the roller bearing. Uh, and those are kind of getting shiny as we get them properly cleaned. You get a long screwdriver, you can put the microfiber towel, kind of wrap, wrap it around the end of the screwdriver, push that inside and just clean it out. And so you can see it's taken all of the dirt and debris out. And if you look down inside there, you want to make sure that's good and clean. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and uh, loop the bearing. So what we want to do now is we want to take the grease and, and push it down inside. And what we're trying to accomplish is we want the grease to push down one side of the roller and squeeze out the other so we make sure that we get it fully packed with grease. Okay, now we talked about earlier we've got the bottom out bumper already in place. Um, when we go to set the assembly back in, uh, these three guide bushings um, sometimes want to pop out so I put your three fingers on those to hold them in place. Go ahead and slide that in. And now what you want to pay attention to is the roller bearing here has three slots in it and the three slots correspond to these um, three guide bushings. And so what I usually do is I'll put this in so that these are just to the right of the slot. It'll slide in and then I turn counterclockwise until it drops in. You can see it just dropped in there. 
continue to, to gently push it in and then once the bearing gets past the outside of the tube it'll go it'll slide in and you won't have any any problem with those popping out just want to be careful when you put them in that they slide in completely and that you don't have one pop out of the groove where you could damage or bend that that uh, lower guide bushing okay so we'll go ahead and push our DU bushing in and then tighten the collar down by hand wipe any excess grease off the outside once we get it tight by hand you're going to take your strap wrench again and tighten down a quarter turn past hand tight and that's all you're going to need okay our last step you can see the the end here has protruded out past the end cap we're going to put the lock washer on then we're going to put our 11 mil nut on you can see on the end of this 11 mil nut it's uh, got a little bit of a mark where the flat washer fit on it so we'll go ahead and put that end back down tighten it up until it touches now the snap ring on this has a split end and all you want to do is tighten this up until those two ends are flat so whether you're using the impact uh, wrench or a ratchet you just want to be very careful see that's all it's all I'm gonna do if you over torque this you can break that shaft so you just want to tighten it up enough so that the the lock washer is flat and that'll be enough to keep it in place you don't need to torque it any more than that Our final step while we've got this off the bike is going to be to lube the upper actuator so we're gonna go ahead and pull with our two millimeter Allen we're gonna go ahead and pull that out you can use that same Allen to go ahead and push the actuator pin out and that'll come out and if you notice on this show you real quick there's a step here so right at this edge here there's a step and so if you take just this screw off and you try to pull it out that way it's going to stop on that shoulder so what you want to do is when this is set up this is the front and this is towards the back of the bike this is going to be on the left hand side so if you're like your the position you'd be sitting on the bike the non-drive side is the side you want to pull the pin out from so we'll pull that pin out if we shake it now we have this actuator assembly here what we want to do is just go ahead and clean this out so again probably just take your screwdriver wrap the microfiber towel around it and just get in there there shouldn't be too much stuff in here because this is pretty well sealed from the elements but since we've got it apart, it's a good time to clean it. We'll take a little dollop of grease, and inside is the, the push rod piston. We're going to go ahead and put some grease on there. We're going to make sure that our actuator is clean. We're going to take and put another little dollop of grease on the pivot pin here, that one we were talking about earlier. We're going to go ahead and set this back together. The, the set screw for the cable goes on top. The curved position goes to the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and put that through. We're going to take the pin, push it through. We take the other screw with the two millimeter Allen. Tighten that down. You only need to go about a quarter turn past hand tight on that. And that's it. We're ready to go ahead and put that back on the bike.